I was going to talk about some of the less expensive cards you can use in the A6700. When you're shooting video, uh, it makes a bigger difference in um, what type of card you need to have if you're going to shoot at higher bit rates, uh, especially at the um, 120 frame rates, the slow motions. Uh, they actually have the highest bit rates that pull out of any of the cards when you're using them. So say if you're going to go into an S and Q mode on here, that setting there in the 120 frames per second um, at say 24p output, that has the highest bit rate of any file that's used in the A6700. So you need an Ace, uh, V90 card. Um, some cards aren't listed as V90, and they're not. Most of them won't work with those higher bit rates on them. So sometimes you need to try to find a card that you can afford. And there's a few out there that's a um, half the price of the Sony cards. The Sony G Tough cards are great. Um, I'm happy with them. I've got a, quite a few different ones. Um, they also list the highest uh, record rates of any of these. The writing rates um, are the most important though. The read rate helps a little bit, say if you're moving files from um, you know, the SD card to your computer to, to edit them or whatever, that, that makes a difference there. But the write speed actually makes the biggest difference on whether you're um, your Sony camera can uh, able enable you to shoot at those higher bit rates. Um, the Sony card works great. There's a couple other cards I want to talk about. Um, this Delkin Power, it's about half the price sometimes of what the Sony cards are. Um, I find with these, they're really reliable. Um, you're looking at about $45 on average versus uh, 85 with the Sony cards um, and these silicon um, power cards they can be even less expensive um, most of the time they're around 40 to 45 dollars on Amazon or um, B&H but uh, occasionally B&H has them for as low as 30 dollars I've seen that happen a few times where they've dropped that price these silicon power cards, really not a whole lot of people have heard about them, but they've been around for quite a while. And I've used this particular card, uh, quite a few of my Sony cameras, and started using it with the A6700 when I first got it. And I've had no issue at no matter how high of a bit rate um, you use in the camera. But occasionally find these at 30 and getting the same performance that I get with my Sony Tough card, it's sort of hard to beat at way less than half the price with it. When you switch into S and Q mode, with these you have to uh, look at the monitor and make sure that it allow you to record in the uh, higher frame rates that you need so when you first turn this on you'll get a warning on here and it'll just tell you the super slow motion and explain it to you but if your cards not a v90 you'll get a warning saying that your card is not fast enough so you can see with this card it'll be fast enough to shoot in that higher bitrate video um, when you look here in the settings, if you go to this and then you go to S and Q settings, if you look, this is set into the highest bit rate. So it's the 10 bit 422, 100 megabits per second on it. And that, like I said, is the most taxing of any of these. Back, back out, go to shoot. See, so it'll allow you to shoot with it, so there's no issues with this card. And you'll find that there's no issues with any of these three cards that I showed. You do run into trouble with some of these other Sony cards that are higher bit rates. Um, this will show you 
it has the same record and write bit rate that uh, you get with the tough cards, but the original G cards aren't V90 rated, so you go to turn the camera on and it won't allow you to use this card. Now, your buffer clearing when you're shooting images, if you shoot high frame rates, it'll clear just as fast as the tough cards will, um, but it just won't work for video, so be careful if you're trying to buy any of these cards on the used market. These work great for uh, photos, but I wouldn't buy them for video. Um, so that just shows you that you can get away with a, a little bit less expensive card and it work really well for video with no issues with the shooting at the highest bit rate. Um, the one card that I've had trouble with in the A6700 are the uh, Lexar Professional, the gold cards. Um, for some reason, I've had two sets of those and I had issue with at least one card in both packs of the 120 gigabyte size ones that occasionally they'll say that you can record in the high bit rates and sometimes it won't. It'll tell you that it's not a V90 card. Um, also, I had one card that went corrupt and basically couldn't recover it. There's nothing you do about it. So I don't know if it's just the compatibility with the A6700 or what, but the Lexar is the only ones I've had in a V90 card had any trouble with. So you might want to look out for that. Um, I don't know if it's just the two sets of cards I had. Um, one set came from Amazon and one set came from B&H. So two different sources and problems with them both each time. So that, that's something to think about. But for an inexpensive card, um, it's really hard to go wrong with either the Delkins or the uh, SP cards here. One thing about the Delkins, um, this is what a lot of the government entities use. So uh, the government purchases these Delkin powers in bulk and uh, they actually find them reliable enough to use with uh, you know, some pretty high-end work that they do. So if the government's happy with them and buying enough of them, that should give you some idea that they're fairly reliable so something else to think about but uh, hopefully this helps you out uh, please like and subscribe thanks